Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be making meatloaf. I wanted to make something like my grandmother's meatloaf, and while not quite as good as hers, this recipe really turned out quite well. We will get to the ingredients in a moment, but first I would like to thank everyone who has subscribed and has been watching and sharing the videos. It really helps the channel grow and makes me really happy. And if you have not already subscribed, if you like this video, subscribe for more like this. For the meatloaf, we're going to need one and a half cups of breadcrumbs, one large egg, one tablespoon dehydrated minced onions, one tablespoon of minced garlic, one tablespoon Worcestershire sauce, one ta teaspoon hot sauce, one teaspoon mustard, two teaspoons salt, and two teaspoons pepper, and two pounds of ground beef. For our glaze, we're just going to need one teaspoon mustard, one tablespoon brown sugar, and one quarter of a cup of ketchup. I'm also using a teaspoon of celery flake and a drained can of mixed vegetables in mine today. There's a lot of things you can add once you know the recipe. Olives, mushrooms, beans, diced bell peppers, fresh onion, and some leftovers are all pretty nice add-ins. Once you have all of your ingredients together, we will want to add everything but the breadcrumbs and do a partial mix. If we were to add the breadcrumbs, they would soak up all the liquid and it would not mix very well, so you would end up with little pockets of soggy bread and clumping spices, and that is not appetizing at all. Now, when you, you are mixing this, you do not want to use very much pressure on your hands. You can do most of this mixing without moving your fingers, and that'll help keep the structure of the ground beef in place. Once it is mostly mixed, you want to start picking up the larger pieces and gently crumble them into your hands, breaking it up again without squishing it too much. If you do this right, the actual tube-like structures of the ground beef from the grinding portion will still be intact. We want that so it doesn't get overworked and end up like a meatball everywhere. Ours will be somewhere between a meatball and a hamburger in consistency. So ours will have a bit of both with the outside being smooth and the interior some and the interior still somewhat holds its shape. This gives a firm interior and a bite with just enough cling to make it start crumbling when you begin to chew but also holds its shape while you're cutting and eating it. Once you have all the large pieces broken up and the mix mixed, you want to put your breadcrumbs in. For the first couple of seconds, I do the mixing just like we were doing with the crumbling stage. Then I will start kneading after that. This helps us retain some of the ground beef shape so our meatloaf will have the right consistency. You're looking for a loose mix that just barely sticks together like you can see here. We want it this loose because when we form it into the pan, we will end up squishing it quite a bit while pressing it into the pan, and the mix beginning looser like this helps give us a bit more of a chance to get that desired consistency. Now we will need a pan. You can use any loaf pan, but I find an 8 or 9 inch square maximizes the surface area. And for a lot of people, this is the best part since it's the glaze part. Do not worry about greasing the pan or anything like that since it's only going to be a mold for our meatloaf and we're not, we won't be cooking it in the pan. Once you have all of your mixture in the pan, just start working it outwards and try to make sure you get all the corners filled in. Besides the glaze, this is the most important part for the visuals. If you want a rustic looking outside with uneven spots on the outside shape, you can just fill out the outside and press. don't worry about pressing it out so much. On the other hand, if you want it smoother on the outside, then you're going to want to press it out really well and keep checking the sides of the pan to make sure there's no air bubbles or anything and just push a little more in that area. It, the texture will change a little bit, but not hugely. Once filled, we can just flip over the pan onto our sheet pan and give it a few good drops and it will come right out. That goes into a oven preheated to 325 degrees for 40 minutes and then we can put our glaze on it. Speaking of glazing, for our glaze we just need to mix our ketchup, mustard, and brown sugar until they're smooth. The brown sugar will melt into the ketchup, we just need to speed things along by stirring it a little bit. That also will spread it out and make sure that everything's evenly mixed and gives us a nice even flavor for everything across there. The brown sugar and sugar from the ketchup are what helps the glaze form into that sort of very thick, sweet top that most people have come to think of when they think about meatloafs. Once our 40 minutes are up, we need to take it out of the oven and make sure to put it on a pot holder so we don't burn our counters. I'm going to mop the glaze on and do my best to get a nice even coating. You want a nice even layer on the top at the very least, and get a good layer on the sides as best you can. The more bumpy the sides, the easier this is since they have more to hold on to. The easiest way I've found to do your mop is to just pour most of it on the top and just move it to where you need it with the brush you're using. We want to leave just a little bit in the bowl till the end just to make sure that we don't need to do anything to touch up sides or anything that we missed 
some of the glaze for, but the majority of the glaze is on the other side or anything like that. And just for final touches where something might have already drained off the side. Once your glaze is all on and evenly spread, we want to return to the oven and start checking it internal checking its internal temp every five minutes until we reach a temperature of about 155 degrees. The carryover heat will bring the temperature back all the way up to about 165 degrees, which is what we're shooting for. If your glaze has not reduced into a thick glaze by this time and still has somewhat of a ketchup consistency, you will want to turn the oven to broil and the temperature to broil as well. It should be done this way but between about three to five minutes. So you will have to watch it at this time. Once it is done, cool it for about 15 minutes and you are ready to serve. Speaking of not watching things, I flipped on the light in the oven and saw this wonderful bubbling and I said, I better grab my camera and film that because it looks great. By the time I was done filming, it had a few small burn marks. Not no burnt taste, but a small mar on the visuals, sadly. I'm not honestly sure there is a way to make me love look good for pictures though, so not really a huge loss. So there we have a nice meatloaf. Not quite as good as grandma's, but really I think you have to have that special grandma power to make things that good. If you wanted to make a smaller portion, you can cut all of the ingredients in half and use a small egg instead of a large egg, but you will probably need to add two tablespoons more breadcrumbs to handle the increased moisture that would come with that. And with that, I would like to thank you all for watching, and if you haven't subscribed already and you enjoyed this, subscribe for more like this, and have a great day and a great meal.